In this movie, we're going to discuss the sequence of events that occur during synaptic transmission at the neuromuscular junction. As we discussed in previous movies, Bernard Katz and his colleagues studied synaptic transmission at the neuromuscular junction. Here, a motor neuron makes a very large synaptic connection with a muscle fiber. Notice that the axon breaks up into a series of branches at the junction, where each branch makes a small synapse at locations called synaptic boutons or buttons. One of these boutons is magnified so that we can see the various parts of the synapse. There are a number of features of both the presynaptic terminal, the bouton, and of the end plate, the specialized portion of the muscle fiber at the synapse. Turning first to the bouton, there are mitochondria. There are also synaptic vesicles that are filled with molecules of acetylcholine. And of course, there are voltage-gated calcium channels, which are opened as an action potential invades the terminal. On the postsynaptic side, there are lots of acetylcholine receptors that are embedded in the muscle membrane. And in addition to that, there is a basement membrane called the basal lamina, in which molecules of acetylcholinesterase are embedded. Acetylcholinesterase is the enzyme that breaks down acetylcholine into choline and acetate after acetylcholine is released from the axon terminal. Now let's make the terminal even larger and follow the events that trigger the release of transmitter. And of course the first thing that occurs is an action potential invades the terminal and depolarizes the terminal. The depolarization opens the voltage-gated calcium channels. And that, in turn, allows calcium to be driven into the cell. The calcium influx causes vesicles to fuse with the membrane of the axon terminal. And the transmitter, then, is released into the synaptic cleft. The acetylcholine then binds and opens the acetylcholine receptors on the muscle fiber. The influx of sodium ions into the muscle fiber due to the opening of acetylcholine receptors then generates the end plate potential, that is, the depolarization of the muscle fiber itself. The next thing that happens is that the acetylcholinesterase on the basal lamina hydrolyzes any acetylcholine in the cleft into choline and acetate. The choline is then taken back into the axon terminal and will be recycled to produce new acetylcholine. The acetate, however, diffuses into the extracellular space and is removed via the bloodstream. But due to the reduced concentration of acetylcholine in the cleft, acetylcholine diffuses off of the receptors and is hydrolyzed by the acetylcholine esterase. The acetylcholine receptors close and the synaptic response is over. And those are the basic events that occur during synaptic transmission at the neuromuscular junction.